Well, hello and welcome along to Al's Geek Lab. It's 2023 and this is my first video of the year. I thought it's about time I showed you what channels I subscribe to. Uh, because, well, there's a lot of good stuff out there and some of you might not be aware of all those other great retro channels and other informative stuff. So I'll try and probably put together a list of no particular order all of the channels that I follow on YouTube. Follow them, like them, subscribe to them, do what you will, but these are all kind of channels that I'm interested in. So if you're, uh, if you're interested in my channel, there's a good chance that you'll be interested in some of these channels as well. Stick around till the end, and of course, if you want to become a supporter of this channel, don't forget to like the video, press the subscribe button, don't forget to change the notifications to all, and, uh, well, there's, I've got a Patreon as well. Check out patreon.com forward slash Al's Geek Lab. All of the names of the lovely Patreon supporters who are currently putting donations towards the channel are on the list of down the screen in front of you already. Well, hello there. Right, okay, now we're into it. Uh, we're into YouTube. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, I should be getting the sun. Uh, but decided to uh, pay some attention to Al's Geek Lab because it's uh, it's been a few days. It's been a few days since I even recorded me going, hey, I, I'm really going to do this video now. So I thought I really need to get and do this video. Anyway, if you're not a fan or a follower of Al's Geek Lab, well, what the heck are you doing here? But if you aren't a follower on YouTube in terms of the subscription thing, then you know what to do. Uh, just press the uh, press the subscribe button on the old channel here pick thumbs up all that jazz uh, And if you press that join button there um, You can also donate as well as check me out on the old uh, patreon uh, patreon up here You can uh, donate to the channel up there as well as Ko-Fi Get me up with a coffee or something like that on uh, Ko-Fi all right now rest of the things let's get on with things so what I thought I would do uh, with all the uh, the channels that I follow, I had a look at how many channels I follow. Um, it's a few. It's a it's a fair number. It's 279 plus however many there are here. Um, I'm not going to go through all of those. Okay, I'm sorry about it. And I'm also not going to go through the ones like Magnates Media here, which are non-tech related, still excellent channels. Um, but I and I certainly uh, would probably have another video about them, but totally non-tech related but definitely worth a good look at. But I thought I've split this into two, so I've actually got two uh, Firefox windows open. I've got uh, these ones and I've got these ones, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on these ones first. These are the ones that probably less people are subscribed to. Um, they're probably potentially w less well-known than the big ones, which are like things like LGR, 8-Bit Guy, Nostalgia Nerd, all that sort of stuff. Great channels, of course, and if you're not subscribed to those, then what are you doing? get onto them but I thought um, if if you're a regular of uh, sort of vintage computing videos then these ones are perhaps ones that you don't know about that you should probably check out and I'll, I'll go along the way and I'll try and explain why they are ones that you might want to know no particular order to any of these by the way so it's totally random and some of them I'll spend a little bit more time on than others feel free to fast forward I'm going to try and put in all the links that I can in the description and I'm also gonna try and uh, put a table of contents in so you know which channel's which. And f as I say, no particular reason, but I'm gonna start on Mr. Lurch's things. Now, Mr. Lurch, uh, he's a um, fellow down here in the Southern Hemisphere, and I don't think there's many channels that I follow uh, that are also down here in the Southern Hemisphere, but Mr. Lurch is over in Straya. Uh, I'm here in New Zealand, of course. Don't sound like it, I know. Um, he's got a whole bunch of things he does. He, he does some repairs. Uh, he uh, He's kind of like me in a way that I don't really know an awful lot of electronics, but I kind of get by where I can. But, you know, he kind of does up old machines. And he's got a whole wonderful array of machines. Obviously, you can see here everything uh, like um, Commodore 64s to Amigas. He's quite a fan of Amigas. Um, he's got a ZX Spectrum that he put online. Uh, so again, kind of similar things to me in terms of the vintage computers, really likes to get old computers to do things that they probably shouldn't be doing or had no business doing back in the day and kind of upgrades them in a way that makes them do that sort of stuff. So I really like Mr. Lurch's uh, channel. And then uh, the Libretto 50, 
CT uh, that's a review he did three years ago, but I also love that machine. I had one myself. Uh, that's a great little review. So yeah, and I loved his um, deck, uh, which was a bit more recent, this deck VT220 review. Uh, then put it into a Raspberry, or connected up to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, really good, really good channel. So check out Mr. Lurch's channel. So that's Mr. Lurch's things. Um, next up is the old school PC. Now, um, Oh, this this channel only has 12,000 subscribers and I say only because this should have 1.2 million subscribers this channel is absolutely fantastic um, what what I should say is that I, I know this fellow um, in terms of I've interviewed him through the uh, the back to the BBS series um, but he's been involved with computer demo scene stuff uh, the original IBM PC stuff since basically the beginning of when time began. Um, so he was there at the beginning of all of this, the, the PC stuff, I should say, not not the beginning of computing. Um, but he's, I think he's about a little bit older than me, but not much. And what talent he has in one little pinky, uh, you know, just blows me away. Um, I'm, uh, no, I'm like, I'm not worthy <laughs> for I speak to him. So he's got, he's got lots of Great machines, some great teardown videos. He's also got a lot of um, a lot of work in the uh, the demo scene. Uh, some demos that he made, like 88, 8888 MPH, and the more recent ones. Um, so, look, uh, I can't dwell on this too much because I'll, I'll, this video will go on forever and ever and ever. Please check out his channel if you're at all interested in the sort of IBM PC, the XT 286, that sort of stuff, or the demo scene. Uh, and, and all sorts of um, add-ons and changes and things like that that would um, upgrade your uh, IBM. Like there was a video I watched for a third time about maximizing the memory in real mode of an original IBM PC or XT, which was basically the limit as far as I was concerned was 640K. Well, uh, turns out you can get about 740 or something. I can't remember the exact number, but basically, um, Trickster shows you how to do it. Trickster is the, the person who runs the old school PC. Absolute legend in the scene and well worth a subscription. He doesn't post that op often. You know, you can see uh, last, last video was a month ago, which is a little clicker. And um, so if you've got like one of these CF cards in your machine, this emulates the clicky clicky sound of the original hard drives. Uh, so he shows you all about that and in great detail as well. That's the thing I really like about his videos, lots of detail. But uh, that la that last video was a month ago, and then the previous month, uh, the previous video was about nine months before that. So it's not a it's not a regular posting thing, but it's a quality, not quantity. Uh, definitely, definitely worth a subscribe. Dave just Dave just Dave again. Uh, the quality of his videos, um, I'm still. Uh, he's kind of like me in terms of subscribers. I've got about three point seven thousand at the moment. I think. Uh, Dave's got about 5.5. I have no idea why he's only got 5.5 subscribe K subscribers because the quality of his videos absolutely out of the park. Just really, really good quality, both in terms of content and and also production value. Um, the the stuff that he goes on about is hardware and software, the games, how to. Th this was a good little series about how to buy and sell retro hardware on things like eBay, um, sort of uh, reviews of how to upgrade and hot rod your IBM PC. Again, I've done lots of videos on that sort of subject. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of stuff on, more on the PC side of things than other uh, than other platforms like the Amiga or so forth, but certainly um, lots of stuff that I really enjoy. So if you're into PC retro, uh, that's a really, really good channel to follow. Talking about PC, and this isn't just thrown together, of course. Um, PC Retro Tech, again, most of the stuff that Chris does here is all about PCs. Uh, he's a big fan of the compacts, and I think some Packard Bell stuff. Um, done a little stuff on Tandys as well as uh, the original IBM PCs. Um, what I really like about Chris is that he has sort of gone, I wonder if this can be done, and when when I'm talking about this or X, he really has uh, gone outside the box. So he's done a few videos on things like making uh, calendars work 
on a mod, a, an old PC. He's done videos on making MSN Messenger, not MSN Messenger, um, Facebook Messenger work on a DOS PC. He's made his garage door, I'm saying garage because well, probably to American people, garage doors open on his uh, on his DOS PC. So he's got his little tandy there, he presses a couple of buttons and his garage door opens. Uh, so he's done home automation with his original PC of tandies. So I think that's a really good video, a really good bunch of videos there. Totally takes it out of the, you know, out of the norm uh, for what he can do. And he's talking about USB Wi-Fi there, uh, the wireless DOS network, all that sort of stuff. And uh, Chris has recently been getting himself out there to VCF and all sorts of different festivals and getting himself well known with the uh, the retro community. One thing that I would love to do, but when you live this far away, I'm not going to the States anytime soon to do that sort of stuff. But yeah, really good guy, really nice guy, and uh, very knowledgeable on lots of different subjects, software and hardware. So definitely worth your subscription. Retro Spectre 78. Uh, again, I love this sort of really detailed teardown of the hardware. Most of the hardware that uh, Retro Spectre does is um, IBM based, or sorry, I should say PC based. Um, and it's like, like me, quite interested in both the sort of Linuxy side of things as well as the original retro PC sort of thing. So here's Red Hat 5.2 being installed on a 25 year old PC. So um, again, that's a kind of correlation of the two things that I really like um, in one video. But yeah, loads of different machines of all different types, some really rare ones like the Commodore PC-1 um, showing off what it can do. Definitely worth a subscribe. Uh, David Schmenk, um, I've known about David's uh, tech for a long, long time. So um, particularly he's interested in um, the Apple II range and David actually made some hardware called the Apple II Pie, I think, am I right in saying? I'm gonna to have to scroll through here. Apple II Pie. So basically an interface that will uh, basically interface your Apple II with a Raspberry Pi. So there's a few tools in there. There's tools for you to transfer software to and from your Pi onto a Raspberry, onto an Apple II. And there's also like a keyboard interface. So you can basically take your keyboard from your Apple II and it, talks to the GPIO on a Raspberry Pi. And that way you can be typing away at your Apple II, the screen is connected to the Raspberry Pi, and it makes it seem like you're actually talking to your Apple II, because you're just typing on the keyboard of the Apple II. The reality is you're talking to the Raspberry Pi, and it is running an emulator for a Apple II. Very clever stuff, really, really clever stuff. I've got a, a um, an Apple II Pi, and I think I've made a video on it years ago, um, but uh, David is heavily involved in all of that sort of stuff. So again, if you're interested, have a lot of uh, interest in the Apple II side of things, David's well worth a subscribe. Really sad that he only has 424 <laughs> subscribers because yeah, this guy is very knowledgeable. Um, Digarock, um, uh, hopefully I'm saying these, I'm probably saying them all wrong. He is um, also well involved in the Apple II uh, side of things in terms of hardware and software. Um, the Hyperduino Apple II joystick uh, button uh, is also um, works along uh, with a lot of people at Kansas Fest, which is the Apple II uh, annual festival. Um, so lots of software and hardware interface stuff. Um, I think he may have had something to do with or did write the game called Flapple Bird, which is um, Flappy Bird, but for the um, the Apple II. So he's uh, he's a good. Um, 502 or assembler coder. Uh, what's next? Antoine Vignon, I think Antoine, uh, hopefully I've said your name right again, uh, Antoine. Um, Antoine does a lot of stuff on the Apple II as well. I think I managed to put, there was some semblance of or order here with all these Apple II videos coming together. But um, yeah, lots of different uh, videos on the Apple II, um, cracking the senses. Uh, th there was some particular reason that I followed him for something modern on the Apple II, which I forget exactly what it is right now. But yeah, lots of stuff on the Apple II GS there by the looks of it as well. So um, if you're into um, Apple II GS especially, that's a great channel to follow. Uh, Retros365, um, 
Now, oh yes, this is looking at the original IBM PC games. Uh, big fan of the original Sierra Online games, so like, we're talking right from the very beginning here. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is kind of like reviews of old games, a lot of them for the original IBM platform. So you can see Frogger, which was a port of Frogger onto the PC back in 1983. Um, Sierra actually published that one. So yeah, quite a few Sierra games, Trolls Tales there, um, Dragon's Keep, uh, and so forth. So lots of uh, nice little original early early IBM kind of stuff. Console repairs. I think that channel is pretty much what it sounds like. So it's like basically lots of videos of repairing lots of different types of platforms, including the BBC Micro B, which I have looked at that video for help. Um, there's also Amiga, MSX, Commodore 64, and so forth. Uh, next one, Mega Word TV 2765. Um, not many videos on this channel, um, but what the videos are, I think there's literally this three videos, but I really found them fascinating um, because they kind of talked about things that were kind of out of band, kind of extra use for computers back in the day. So like I didn't really know about the first graphical PC um, that came from this particular manufacturer. I think it was Oregon computer. So it was like Vector Graphics. I remember that. that I watched that ages ago, but that came out two years ago. And this one here, the first laptop had cloud services in 1982. Um, and this is a perk workstation. I can't remember what that one was all about. But these two really interesting videos, definitely worth a watch. The TXDJ. Um, oh yeah, I really liked a few of these videos. This one specifically uh, got me because I'm a Unix guy. I watched uh, with awe of uh, and the IBM 5155. So that's an 8088, you know, a standard PC CPU booting up School Xenix, uh, which is Microsoft and School's original Unix. So a multi-user, uh, multi-threaded operating system platform on a portable IBM PC. Like that video. That was that, there's only a few videos on that channel as well, but uh, de definitely worth your watch. Oh, the 8-bit show and tell. Yeah, so quite a few followers on the 8-bit show and tell. This is not a um, small channel, but if you've never heard of the 8-bit show and tell, there's lots of little interesting bits and bobs on this one, like um, Easter eggs built into Commodore platforms. Um, there's some game reviews on it. Um, there's reviews of Commodore 64 or the C64, which I've done. Um, lots of game development stuff as well. Assembly language pro programming, really cool channel. So yeah, definitely the 8-bit show and tell. A lot of it Commodore based, but um, yeah, if you like Commodore stuff, I'd definitely recommend that channel. Uh, the Obsolete Geek. Again, I don't think this is a small, small channel. No, it's uh, 52,000, um, but uh, hasn't done a lot in recent days, I think. It's quite, yeah, it's not that much up-to-date stuff, but certainly stuff which is worth going back and looking at because um, I think I got a lot of inspiration for my uh, PC pimping from this particular video, Pimping the IBM PC. Um, a really good uh, write-up of how to pimp the IBM PC. It does about exactly what it says in the tin. The Commodore SX64, again, that's six years old and looks at the portable Commodore 64 um, videos that are only kind of starting to make its way into other bigger channels now. So a really good, um, really good channel, which does a lot of different platforms. Um, uh, I think, yeah, I think you should get into that. Well-produced videos as well. Bodband. Um, Bodband, uh, uh, again, this is um, gentleman here. I think he's actually here in Wellington in, in New Zealand, same place as me. And, um, this fella uh, needs more subscribers. Not many videos, but um, has really nice teardowns of hardware and a little bit of a you know a contemplatory video on why people collect vintage computers, um, which is a really nice thing because we don't actually think about that very much. Like, why are we actually doing this strange uh, collecting of all this old equipment? So that's um, quite a nice contemplative video. Next one is Tech Tangents. Um, also, um, not a tiny channel by all stretches of the imagination, 139,000 subscribers. Tech Tangents, a lot of different things from the weird to the wonderful. Um, like I, I watched this a few months ago. Uh, I, I, th this guy put together an ISA card or cloned an ISA card that would drive a CD-ROM drive. 
um, the effort that is involved is worth a subscription on its own. But basically just said, hey, uh, I can't get this ISA card for love nor money. And I really want to use this old, 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 like single speed CD-ROM drive on my PC. So how am I going to do that? Um, so went went full on. And then there's, um, yeah, there's all sorts of different videos in there that are quite, quite uh, unique. It's 3D printing stuff, um, 3D blanking plates there. Uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of followed along on and off for a long time. There's just all sorts of uh, different stuff. You know, look, the, the happy hacking keyboard, uh, deck talk, the speech synthesizer, um, vintage PC networking, all sorts of stuff, which um, is probably quite interesting if you're a vintage PC follower. Gaming Historian, again, not a tiny channel by any stretch of the imagination, almost a million subscribers on there and goes through, uh, this is a really well put together channel following um, history of all sorts of gaming platforms, um, highly worth a follow if um, if you're into um, old platforms and even some of the newer ones. I mean, this video here is quite, um, quite good because it talks about Microsoft's three biggest mistakes and I think a lot of that is, you know, fairly close to current day. Uh, next channel. Ah, retro computing with Mike. Um, yeah, kind of does what it says on his tin, but uh, Mike's a really, um, really interesting guy. Um, very, very uh, animated. I do like his videos. And there's Mike there talking about an Apple Macintosh SE30, how to install games on it. Um, and there's, yeah, there's all sorts of games, right from the sort of games which you played on the PC. Uh, wacky wheels which is great it's kind of like a Mario Kart clone all the way through to stuff can you install a solid state drive in a 50 year old machine the 1967 <laughs> solid state drive so uh, yeah all sorts of stuff again really quite uh, a humorous take on this sort of stuff I like that Teza NZ so Terry is um, based in Palmerston North here in the North Island of New Zealand and uh, I love Terry's documentary style not documentation of all things retro computers. Um, the great thing about Terry is that he's had a, for want of a better term, museum in his own house. And basically his way of cataloging these machines that he has had in his museum is basically, he's put them on his, uh, his blog, but he's also put them on his YouTube channel and done a really good job of just taking a tear down of all these machines in a sort of very detailed way. Um, so everything from the, the CPC, as you can see here, the iMac G3, the Texas Instruments, TI-99, the Atari region, other range, all sorts of different machines. So really good um, teardowns of all sorts of machines. If it's a decent machine and it was worth its while, it's probably reviewed on um, Ted's channel. Retro obsolete. Um, Oh yeah, this is again. This one, not that many, uh, not that many videos, but I quite liked the detail of the IBM 5154 EGA monitor repair. Um, how to install DOS 5.0 on an IBM XT286, which is right up my street because I love the XT286. And yeah, a lot of lot of stuff just about these particular uh, obsolete machines. So yeah, well worth a little look. Thriftweed, um, major. Thriftwood is um, a PC gaming review channel and it's I don't think he goes into talking through them he just does playthroughs of the game so I don't think there's any talking from him as, and as far as I recall but um, plays through all of these games so here's um, the rather long um, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis that's uh, a four hour 20 video uh, where he just goes through the whole game and doesn't utter a word. So if that's the sort of thing for you, you like to see a game just being played through, that's a good thing for you. The Space Quest Historian. Um, this is where I find out about everything Space Quest. Um, and there's there's walkthroughs in here, but there's also um, sort of Easter eggs and information about things that are related to Space Quest. So there's a bit of monologue on there as well. So... Um, like there was a, an album that came out a few years back, which was basically a remastered um, playthrough, uh, remastered audio of Space Quest 3. And it was on vinyl and digital. And um, yeah, it was, I think it was announced here first or something like that. So I get to know a lot of the news about not all things Sierra, but certainly all things um, Space Quest. And, I, and it's one of my favorite 
series of games as well. But you can see here there's a police quest. Uh, I think that's a walkthrough or something like that. Um, and then there's there's also games that are being remade by fans in the Space Quest series. So that there was um, there's remakes of Space Quest, like the original EGA into VGA, but there's also reboots of the game that were kind of um, related but had a different sort of game in it. Um, so they're all kind of reviewed here. This is a good place to hear about them first. So, yep, that's the Space Quest historian. Operation 8-Bit, uh, 2,500 subscribers. It's a fairly new channel, um, and it, I like the humor in it. It's kind of it's kind of kooky, um, but there's lots of different, um, different videos in here. Everything from uh, stuff which is kind of left field, which I really liked, like the concurrent 386 DOS, so Digital's take on having a multi... I think it was multi-user, multi-processing um, version of DOS, which was supposed to be IBM DOS compatible. Uh, so there's like a review on it and how to get it working, as well as you know everything from you know PC to the Nintendo, all that stuff. So there's re repairs and there's reviews and all that sort of stuff. So great, great channel there. Uh, well worth the sub subscribe. DOS Gamer Man. Um, Yes, uh, just trying to remember what DOS Gamer Man is. Not many, not many subscribers on this channel, but there. I think they're just yeah uh, playthroughs of a lot of the old Sierra games, which of course I love, and there's some other games as well, like the Legend of a Red Dragon, which is uh, a BBS game. Um, that sort of stuff. So if you like watching walkthroughs and playthroughs of games um, that were for DOS, it's a good channel. On a retro tip, good channel. Um, not tiny, uh, 27 and a half thousand subscribers, but uh, what you find in this is there's interviews and also um, making ofs and lots of feature length documentaries like this one here. An hour and 41 of the making of the GoldenEye game from Nintendo 64. Really, really in depth detail, really good documentary. So if you're into the documentary sort of style of stuff, which of course you might be if you follow my channel, then uh, this is a really good channel to follow as well. The Tech Time Traveler. Again, I don't think this is a tiny channel. No, 26.8 subscribers, K subscribers. Um, I was about to say they don't. he doesn't come out with um, lots of video. That's because I haven't got all. That's, that's a very important thing, by the way. If you subscribe to our channel but don't change the notification bell to all, then you're not going to get the notification to say when a new video comes out. So that's why I was thinking that this video has not got very many videos uh, coming out but it obviously does you can see two months ago a month ago five days ago really good quality well produced uh, obviously takes an awful lot of time uh, and patience putting together the videos and their documentaries on here there's um, hair downs reviews all that sort of stuff everything from setting up a bulletin board system to the documentary on the rise and fall of digital um, I love this sort of style. You can see him giving something to him. He's sort of, yeah, um, really well produced uh, videos. Quite, quite, uh, quite funny. This one here, actually, I remember watching. It's called the Mini Scribe Fiasco, and that's I won't spoil it for you. But short story version of that is they they had a bit of business trouble. So Mini Scribe made hard drives back in the day. So what the accountants did or the managers did is they basically made up a fake inventory and filled boxes and boxes, like tens of thousands of boxes with bricks rather than real hard drives and stuck them in a, a, a factory or a warehouse somewhere and said that we've got the, we've got the inventory. Uh, so it was a bit of a, yeah, it was a bit of a scandal back in the eighties really. Um, and then they went bust. So that was the, that's the story of uh, Miniscribe there. So really, really good. And I had no idea about that particular um, story. So that's definitely worth watching. What else have we got here? We have got M Michael MJD, a uh, long time channel. Um, lots of different, like lots of different things. Um, how Steve Jobs changed pizza delivery. Microsoft, I, have, I haven't watched this yet. I really want to watch this. Um, Microsoft saved Apple, the biggest myth in tech history. So did uh, Microsoft save Apple computer or did they not? This is a really good video. Um, so these are sort of documentary length again. The rise and fall of Netscape. Uh, what happened to Netscape? Why did they lose out in the browser wars? All that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so lots of lots of different videos on 
lots of different things, not necessarily all retro related, but mostly are, and some sort of weird tech as well thrown in the in the balance, but really well done. Um, definitely recommend that channel. The the No Swear Gamer, again, family friendly reviews of a lot of um, Atari 2600 type games. I really like Atari 2600, but there's also other platforms in there as well. I think there's Atari 7800, but I thought there was other videos in there. And yeah, there's a toy as well. So yeah, so there's a few. If you like Atari kind of stuff, definitely worth a, a watch of the videos on that channel. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's any swearing in any of the videos, no matter how crappy the games on that uh, those reviews are. Um, Home Computer Museum. I think this is, I think, I'm only thinking that this is a fairly new channel. Um, and I think the gentleman who runs it is um, the guy who runs a computer museum, the home computer museum, I should say, in the Netherlands. And I want to say that that is the case only because I watched the video by Nostalgia Nerd fairly recently where he went over and saw a machine uh, called the Estetis, uh, which is this machine right here. And so I think that that's the guy who actually runs the museum and was in the video. Um, so I just kind of put two and two together there uh, when I was bringing up these tabs. Um, if it is, very knowledgeable guy, really nice guy actually, um, and definitely uh, should um, hopefully get that channel um, on the go uh, a bit more than the 1.8 subscribers he's got. Cathode Ray two, Dude um, does a lot of teardowns of uh, hardware not just computers, all sorts of things. I like this video here on the the, the longest laptop ever made by IBM. But uh, there's all sorts of stuff. He's into, you know, cathode ray tube television sets and studio monitors. He's also into, um, you know, digital and, and analog items like CD players and yeah, all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of like, yeah, a bit, a bit of a mishmash, but it's all retro, um, whether it be um, computer related or not. Really, really nice channel. Par Avion 5706 Also, I think Par Avion is a subscriber of Al's Geek Lab, which is awesome. Um, and also based here in New Zealand. Uh, not terribly many videos on his channel yet, but when he gets some equipment, I think his idea is to, to tear it down and show what it's all about. So uh, definitely worth a watch. Into, you know, the big box games as well, talking about the big box games. Um, was also at Auckland's Vintage Tech Mega Sale, which I was at as well. It's a really well put together video, better than my one on the same subject. So um, if you like my videos on certain things, then you can probably like this. James Nintendo Nerd, well, uh, I think you get the idea. He started out make, making reviews of um, Nintendo games, but is now basically called the Angry Video Game Nerd. And uh, if you watch the angry <laughs> video game there, um, it's the opposite of all the swearing, uh, the non-swearing, non-swearing reviews. These are basically many swears as you can possibly get into review. Why a game is pretty average, um, he will go on and, and trash a game. And some of them are really funny. Uh, he reviewed um, Home Alone uh, a few months ago and managed to somehow get Macaulay Culkin to come along and do the review of the game with them and I think both of them uh, found at the end that the game absolutely sucked. So that was, uh, that's really funny, um, really good channel to follow as well. So yeah, not a small channel, 3.71 million subscribers, so you might already be a follower of that channel. DOS Storm, great, uh, great if you like um, all things um, DOS gaming. Um, Quite a new channel as well, so if you uh, if you aren't uh, if you aren't aware of it, definitely get that uh, followed. Um, yeah, hardware and software as well on that channel. Retro set, um, a lot of stuff. That's again, it's a small channel, not that many videos, and it's all kind of about the um, the hardware of the 80s and 90s. A lot of it on um, dial-up modems and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, head over there. Fostex. Again, this is more about bulletin board stuff and getting old machines which weren't ever intended for uh, the internet to get on the internet. You can see a TI-99 um, on the retro battle stations there. Uh, Fostex also runs um, a 
bulletin board called Level 29, I want to say, um, which you can access with pretty much any retro hardware. Like So as long as you've got um, a, a dial-up modem or something like that that allows your retro machine to go on to uh, a telephone line or a telnet, then yeah, you can do it. So there's a TI-99, uh, uh, sorry, a, T a TRS-80 going on uh, a bulletin board um, like it was 1979. Uh, really good channel, so yeah, follow that if you're interested in retro hardware and also the amalgam of uh, retro hardware getting on the internet slash bulletin boards. VC Federation, which is the Vintage Computer Federation, a lot of talks and um, exploits of what goes on with the Vintage Computer Federation. So if you use their website quite a lot and look at articles and follow their articles. A lot of interesting stuff about the various pieces of hardware that the Vintage Computer Federation have. Well, what to follow. The Old Net. Uh, the Old Net is a, uh, a gentleman who makes the, uh, I want to say this right, I think it's the Wi-Fi 232. Um, and so he's made the actual hardware, but also shows about how you can get connected to the internet and bulletin boards with uh, vintage hardware of all different types, not just the PC or the Mac. Um, I think he's also the guy who made um, Frog Find, uh, which is like a search engine which is suitable for um, non-modern browsers. So really cool. Um, and he's got a YouTube channel. Definitely worth a follow. Mac 84, really good sort of general channel about old vintage Mac stuff of all different types, really. Um, so, and upgrades as well, a lot of upgrades of old Macs to make them do more interesting things. Route 42, um, I think a lot of the channels there, this this guy, super clever guy, um, talks about how to do um, machine code or assembler code, I should say. Um, talk, talks about lots of Commodore stuff, but also Atari stuff, PC stuff, Game Gear stuff. Yeah, all sorts of stuff to make. Um, yeah, the whole tutorial there, on um, coding in x86 assembly and so forth. So if you like a deep dive, great channel to follow. Ancient Electronics, basically teardowns and reviews of old machines. Uh, yeah, oh, Curious Mark is, um, again, not really um, too much in the way of PC stuff or retro machines, it's retro hardware. So he's actually got some real experience of the Apollo equipment, the Apollo moon landing equipment. Uh, you can see this here, a 1930s teletype used as a Linux terminal. Um, so this is really old school equipment. We're talking like the most modern thing that he's probably got on this is from the 60s. Computer Clan. Oh yes, this one here, a lot of the stuff on this is Mac based, um, but really quite a humorous channel. Um, and it, it, there's a few there's a few stuff here, there's the scam tech stuff as well. And then there's a kind of weird wear. Um, talks about, yeah, this is a $1,300 for, made for seniors, uh, a leather mouse, you know, there's just weird stuff on there as well. It was really cool. End Commander, a lot of this kind of crosses that barrier of retro PC kind of stuff and also Linux for me, so I, I like that sort of stuff. And then this here, the, the real story of why Space, Space Cadet Pinball, which was an XP, why it was actually removed. There was a lot of hubris about that particular thing, and so End Commander set the story straight. Again, old versions of Debian there, and uh, what does it take to run Doom on a $10,000 PC? So lots of cool videos there. Um, channel's been around for a while, um, but definitely deserves a few more subs, I think. Commodore Computer Museum does pretty much what it says on the tin, but I'm surprised at how little um, the subscriber count is. This channel run is run from um, my home country of New Zealand, so maybe that's why. And I think it's a fairly new channel. I think it's been around for about three or four years, um, but uh, really high production quality. Um, so a really impressive channel. So check it out. Um, Retrobytes UK. Yeah. So there's some there's some documentary stuff on this as well. This I quite like this. Um, the how we got the modern internet uh, channel. Uh, the video was quite good. Um, there's, there's a lot of nice videos on this one as well. So yeah, definitely check it out. Um, Token Ring, the Betamax of networking. You need to check that video out. Um, this one is good as well. The deck and the PDP-11. So basically the story of digital corporation. Uh, yeah, definitely worth, a, definitely worth a watch to see. Good videos on that one. 
Retro Eric or the HDD Clicker. This is the first video I saw which talked about the HDD Clicker before I watched Trickster's video on it. Um, how to convert from CGAG to B to RGB a composite. All the sort of stuff about the, the old PC there. Um, but yeah, um, sort of mixture of demo scene and retro old PC stuff. PC Retro Tech. So again, more of the, the demo scene, the old PCs. Uh, PC Retro Tech, uh, really interested in. He writes his own code as well for old machines. So you can actually get to see him write along some old code or new code for old machines and make some really stunning effects and so forth. So it's kind of talking about how the, the old demo scene demos were made on such limited hardware. Um, so it's quite a lot of um, interesting stuff about there. This, this video here about he did a sort of review of all the old CPUs which were in line with the 8088, so the 8088, the 8086 and also the V20 and basically does a drag race between all of those videos. Um, and then how he gets the most out of CGA. So you can see here a video of CGA there, these two fast spinning sprites um, on the machine with more color than you should be getting. So um, definitely worth a watch if you're interested in demo scene or um, old school PC hardware. Geek with social skills, again, um, a very good uh, bunch of videos on a whole bunch of different um, old machine types of old machine hardware. Um, flipping the original Apple II Coretica disc update, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, but a review here of the Commodore SX64 in box, the PCW8256, which is actually a really good and underrated machine. Uh, yes, yeah, so lots of lots of really good sort of fix-ups and reviews of old there. The basement channel. You know, I like his haircut for stars. A really, really good haircut. I think, yeah, a, quite quite a bit of um, Mac stuff as well. But um, again, some fix-ups, uh, upgrades, repairs, and reviews. Veronica explains. Veronica is um, great for reviewing all things Linux, and and has very regular videos. Um, so every sort of week or two, there's something else about the Linux scene or something along those lines. But uh, I like the fact that she's also a big fan of the Model M keyboard, which I have one right behind me, um, and you know why you should be using the Model M. Uh, she's got a video also on the Commodore 64 going online, uh, but most of the stuff that she has on her video uh, videos are all about Linux and the various state of the Linux uh, world, and also giving some quick tutorials on various things in Linux. So I think I saw a video just the other day about LS. Oh yeah, a little Linux lesson on LS. So if you're new to Linux, then that's a good starting place because LS is probably the first command you'll ever learn. So yeah, really good channel. Definitely watch Veronica. Uh, Anova Print, 8088. Oh yeah, so this is uh, kind of lots of things, um, Commodore and uh, PC. Uh, this this Doom demo, which is really awesome, you can just see the thumbnail there. You can see that, that somebody's actually made a basically a Doom engine. I mean, it's not got baddies in it, it's not got a gun or anything like that, but it's basically a 3D engine that kind of looks a wee bit like Doom for a Commodore 128. Which is just, you can actually do that with that, that bold power machine. Uh, yeah, so just lots of sort of little random videos, not that many videos yet. Hopefully, there'll be more. Uh, good start out on that one. Bill Thorpe, um, games made of cardboard. Now, um, Bill really deserves a lot more subscribers because Bill spends a, a countless months, uh, months and months and months of his own time uh, making these games made of cardboard videos. Um, and that is exactly what it what it sounds is what it is. So like he's a big fan of Doom, uh, for example, has made um, a, like a video of him playing Doom, but it's made of cardboard. So you just gotta watch the videos to understand. But basically, there's Super Mario, and um, you know all the characters and everything. It, it, his sets are entirely made of cardboard, and he has little poems that he does along to the gameplay. Um, just so much hard work and effort that he goes into making these videos really, really deserves uh, more support or supporters. So definitely uh, have a look at that. It, it just, it's 
super, super, super. You know, they, there's a kind of little thumbnail there of him making Sonic, the you know, green screen. Just the amount of time it must take him to make. So if you want a little laugh as well, something to switch off from, that's, yeah, really good. Definitely, definitely give him a follow. Uh, I think he's working hard on a sort of Doom 2 video at the moment as well. This is kind of like a, you know, all things kind of um, <laughs> reminds me of Tom's hardware and Anantech back in the day. Just this kind of review of all like sort of retro related equipment. Some of them not that old, some of them old, but you can see this is kind of like, yeah, SATA and that sort of late 90s, early noughties kind of hardware reviews. DOS Gamer T, that's Bart, uh, who plays, uh, long plays games quite a lot, but also yeah, mainly DOS games, um, and is a big fan of um, Wolfenstein as well. Uh, so if you like streaming game reviews and so forth, I, I occasionally do uh, game streams, live streams, you'll see that Bart does it an awful lot more than me, it's kind of his thing. So yeah, follow there, not a small channel, 16.9 subscribers. So yeah, uh, channel uh, Retro Bits TV. Um, that that I just watched this video actually just the other day. Retro Bits. Um, what's the Commodore 64 slash 128's maximum transfer rate? I was quite surprised at how fast um, he could get data transferring over a serial port in uh, in a Commodore 64. So um, most of his videos are Commodore related. Um, I think there's every now and again he'll throw something else in there. There's a, a thrift and an unboxing of a Mega Drive or Genesis. This one looks like a uh, Coco or something like that. So yeah, there's there's various stuff. Most of it has got a bit of modernness in it. Like this here is using modern hardware to make the Commodore 64 go at those sort of speeds. And there's a Mr. FPGA review. So there's a bit of you know a mishmash of old meets new. This one, Tales of Weird Stuff, does de de Doom benchmarks um, on old equipment. Um, yeah, some really nice videos there. I can't really remember why I followed it in the first place, but you know, if you have a look at some of the videos there, like this one here, the Intel 4004, um, really interesting stuff. So lots of different kind of hardware, um, like the Spark stations, um, participates in Septandy, which is cool. Um, went to VCF West uh, recently, um, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, and yeah, and also participates in the DOS server. So definitely worth a follow. Epitronics, not that small of a channel, I think. Um, oh well, okay, seven point six k followers. I think his videos are really good. Uh, just finished watching one earlier on this afternoon, which is about the mini scrape hard drive. Also. Um, and his cursed Canon PC. So basically he gets a lot of machines which are generally cursed in one way, shape or form and goes through and fixes them up. He fixes them up with a lot of skill and dexterity. He's stuff that I would just go, this has gone into the too hard basket, I'm not going to fix this up anymore. But um, I think um, he has a bit more electrical knowledge than I do, or a lot more probably, and uh, really manages to fix up some machines that would seem otherwise completely dead. So definitely worth a follow. Um, and has um, recently spent a lot of money on his um, on his studio, like uh, really upgraded the looks of it. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I, uh, his, his studio is looking pretty nifty. Um, nifty. Uh, Ron's computer vids uh, again. Um, lots of shorts on this this channel at the moment, um, but does a lot of Mac stuff um, and does a lot of. Um, Sort of meetups and streams with other people as well. So if you're into your Mac stuff, definitely, uh, and your early Apple stuff, Apple II and so forth, definitely worth a follow. Dose nostalgia. Some pretty good videos in here. Small channel, uh, but still has a lot of followers, 26.7 thousand. Um, most of it is like kind of collated content from other places. So he's got it here like a Roberta Williams interview from way back in 1994 when Sierra was still a thing. Lots of just, yeah, collated stuff, which is probably of interest to you if, you've, if you're if you a PC gamer or a PC person from back in the day. Pixel Amusement, uh, quite follow their shovelware uh, diggers um, reviews. Uh, they generally just go through like shareware or shovelware CDs and 
bring up some games and review them and see whether we totally sucked or not. I remember this game called Tube. I watched this video the other day um, and I was like, oh, I forgot all about that game by Bullfrog, which was on the cover of a magazine in the 90s, which I got. But uh, yeah, the reviews of lots of old games, some of them really naff and hopes a lot of fun at, and some games which are really good. So yeah, all DOS games, I think. Um, ancient DOS games, yep. Yeah. So if, you, if you're interested in that, then great. Um, and there's also some other stuff which is outside that box as well. Usagi Electric. This channel um, goes into a lot of detail about uh, certain things. Um, so for example, um, let's see if there's playlists on this. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in um, vacuum tube logic, for example, learn all about it in this series. Um, lots more knowledge than I'll ever have about um, vacuum tubes. Uh, it makes up a breadboard computer. Again, a whole playlist on how that's made from start to finish. And then um, there's this uh, Miz mini computer, which I think he managed to pick up from somewhere. I can't remember. Or oh, Centurion, that's it. Uh, so there's a whole series of videos about how he basically rescued this um, this, this blue thing you can see there, uh, which is the Centurion, which is a, a business computer system, a sort of mini computer. Um, quite quite the epic to fix up that old computer, but it was a pretty cool machine, and he managed to fix it up, and he shows you step by step um, how he fixed up this old mini computer as well. So um, yeah, really clever guy and has a patience of a saint to fix up and work on some of this old, rather unheard of equipment. Some of this equipment is like stuff you'll never ever have heard of before. Uh, okay, Modern Vintage Gamer. Um, Aussie guy who's in America, I believe, and he's done a lot of uh, reviews of a lot of different platforms, all sorts of stuff, and there's some more esoteric things as well. Um, so yeah, so basically every platform you can think of um, from mainly from the past, he's um, he's doing reviews of the platform themselves, the hard the hardware, and also the software, the games, so forth. So um, Sony PlayStation, Xbox, the original one, Nintendo Switch, and so forth and so forth. Um, if it's worth reviewing, it's probably on Modern Vintage Gamer. Retro Tech or Die. Um, only been following this channel a little while. I don't know if it's new or not, but um, I really like this. So for example, there's a video here on upgrading the screens on the original Game Boy to make it look, well, visible, which is something that the Game Boy was never really very good at. So that's a great sort of tear down and fix up video. Um, the old net and AIM in 2022, that, that looks like it's de definitely worth a watch. Um, he bought a fake Nintendo Famicom and uh, he's got a project that he's going to develop on with that. Um, yeah, lots of different lots of different uh, hardware and there's also some sort of other things in there that he's imported from elsewhere like the Tech TV interviews. So yeah, good, good, uh, good channel um, and as I say, I think it's fairly new but um, it's going definitely in the right direction so yeah, check it out. The Rasteri, I think this is my last of these channels. Um, Rasteri is a fellow Scotsman, uh, but he's actually in Scotland, and he has worked um, on making some videos. Where's his most popular videos? Um, there's the machine, oh yes, the tiny PC. So he's making um, tiny, tiny, tiny PCs, DOS PCs that are capable of playing like Doom and all sorts of stuff um, in, in this really, really small form factor. He's very good at that sort of stuff. And he's got some really Heath Robinson style machines going on there. You can sort of see there and DOS games on a tiny industrial motherboard. So these are the sort of things that sit behind the screen in, you know, um, yeah, in places like McDonald's or something like that. And there's the Wii C. You can see how small it is. Uh, and he puts it in a sort of aluminium case. And yeah, it's literally. It was that less than four inches big uh, so yeah uh, lots of really cool things and he was obviously a DJ at some point in time like myself so he's got the Vestax Samurai Linux machine teardown which was cool um, a robotic dildo yeah because we've all got one of those <laughs> so there you go that's the last of the sort of um, you, pro you may not have heard of these channels but you should definitely check them out the Rust area that's the last one there
and I'll come over to these. Now, fortunately for you, you don't have to wait through too many because it's like sort of six or seven, maybe eight tabs here and that's it, we're finished. But these are the, the bigger channels, so I wanted to put them at the end. So you, you probably heard off all of these or at least the majority of these, but if you haven't, then you're in for a treat, okay? So the first one I've got, these again are in no particular order. This one is called Ahoy. Now, Retro Ahoy does not release videos very often. There's a good reason for that. The quality of these videos blows your mind. Really, really, really good production value. Um, so like here's a, a review of Quake, how it was made, what's special about Quake. Obviously, you've probably played Quake to its death, but you probably didn't know these things about Quake. And just, yeah, just watching the video, you just get a totally different appreciation for Quake and so forth. The Secret of Monkey Island, again, how that came to be, uh, all the different things that, that's um, part of it. Um, Wolfenstein 3D, again, like where its origins were, how it became the game it was, what hardware, all the, the different things that made up the 3D engine, Half-Life, all those sorts of things. Talking about the history of video games, the first ever video games, you know, the, the, the Amiga and how it languished, basically. So loads and loads of really good videos. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're into that part of it, not necessarily be into the, the, the gun part of it, but you will almost definitely be into this part of it around the the, um, the, the documentary style length of, uh, of, the, of the, the game reviews or the hardware reviews and stuff like that. And there's also these ones here about the history of video games itself, of gore, of piracy, graphics and so forth. These are all really, really good. So definitely, uh, this is sort of thing that you could. This is a channel that you could sort of lose yourself on, and you know you could lose hours and hours to. I mean, most of these uh, reviews uh, or videos, sorry, I should say, are about an hour long, or at least half an hour long. Um, some of them even more than that. This one, XCOM, is one hour forty. So yeah, yeah. If you like a good old documentary length video? That's that's a great channel to follow. That's a hot Xbox boy. Dave's Garage, or Garage, as I would call it. Um, he's written a book recently called The Autistic Millionaire. Check that out as well if you um, are somebody who's on the spectrum or knows somebody who's on the spectrum because uh, it might help enlighten you. Um, that's that's an, 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 I'm not plugging him in any way other than to say that um, uh, it's something that he's obviously been very good at. Dave is a retired... Um, programmer for Microsoft. He worked on, I think from the MS-DOS days all the way through to like Windows 2000 and XP and so forth. Um, he has all sorts of videos from everything about like why computers get slow and, and stuff about LEDs to uh, well, autism as well as um, some of the Easter eggs that are in Windows and um, some other things about Linux as well, like Linux and Windows 10, which is faster. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of different stuff. Um, that's Google, so if you don't know about Google dorking, for example, that one's quite a good video. Loads and loads, and he comes out pretty much every week now with new content. Some of it's about retro things, some of it's got nothing to do with retro stuff, but in the end, I think it's something that's probably going to keep your attention. So, again, pretty good, pretty good channel. Retro Hack Shack. Um, some of this is kind of uh, not documentary length, but certainly uh, close to documentary length, and it's certainly stuff that will uh, keep your attention. This video about uh, 10 things you didn't know about the Atari VCS. I was surprised. I thought I knew quite a lot about the 2600, the VCS, but I was surprised and actually learned quite a lot about uh, the Atari 2600 some original interview content with people like Nolan Bushnell in that video as well. Um, great video. Um, Apple One, the history and the build guides. So there is these sort of videos there. 30,000 um, Mac, dollar Macintosh, um, restoring videos, uh, game videos, lots of great stuff here. Adrian's Digital Basement, you've probably heard of Adrian's Digital Basement. If you haven't, um, basically he has a basement at full full of old computers. He gets a lot of donations and most of these donations are, well, they're broken. 
And so yeah, he just fixes them up. Sometimes they take one video to fix up. Sometimes they take two, three, four, five videos to fix up. Um, he has interesting ways of showing you how he does the repairs and he goes to you know quite a lot of detail. So, um, you know, shows you about things like how to use an oscilloscope, for example, and how much money to spend on an oscilloscope, how to upgrade CPUs on your vintage machines. Um, lots of that sort of interesting stuff. So uh, yeah, um, if you've not got Adrian's Digital Basement as part of your subscriptions, do that. Nostalgia Nerd, again, I'm sure you've heard of Nostalgia Nerd. Uh, really nice, funny guy. Um, goes all over the place, does some wacky videos and some not so wacky videos, but um, you know, I really like this video on why does USB keep changing? Yeah, well, why is that? Well, there's answers here. Um, the mysterious computer that could prove time travel existed. Weird, wacky videos, as I say. Um, but then there's other videos which are more normal, kind of like talking about um, particular computers that you may or may not know a lot about, or there's game reviews and so forth as well. But it's just a wide variety of all things nostalgia. So Nostalgia Nerd is the right channel name for that channel. Great video. LGR. Okay, so this is basically where it began, I think. Um, you're probably a subscriber already, but if you're not, Lazy Game Reviews is how it started off. So that's what LGR stood for. And he, it was like real basic reviews. The channel was shot with a crummy old analog camcorder and then was you know converted and then uploaded to YouTube and I think that probably was about 10 years ago it was a, it's, it's been going a long time so that just goes to show it's got over um, it's almost got 2 million subscribers in fact um, for something which is still I guess fairly niche you know if we're talking about retro gaming and retro computing um, that's what it's all about but Clint um, is a really really nice guy um, and you know it's just doing his thing because he loves it and I think at one point he was able to give up his career and shift into just doing this so this is literally his career that's doing these videos so that's cool and he's got all sorts of things a lot of equipment he's donated these days and he picks up some at thrift stores and so forth but reviews all sorts of stuff and yes he still reviews games as well um, so yeah well worth not just well worth a watch if you're not subscribed Go subscribe now because this is kind of where it all began. Um, Perifractic and his retro recipes. Again, um, I think everybody's um, a subscriber to Perifractic. Um, Perifractic, I, I don't want to say he used to because he probably still is, but was or is an actor um, and was in, you know, I think a number of movies as well and he it shows because his personality really he's got a he's got a really colorful personality and i mean that in the best possible way he exudes personality on his videos it's really humorous and i really enjoy all his videos um even if i'm not that interested necessarily in the subject of the video which i usually am but if i'm not i still like watching him because he's just got that kind of you know it's great to watch something on tv because you know it's it gives you comfort. Last video was about building the world's first 100% new Commodore 64. Um, he does sort of things like uh, you know a bit of Knight Rider stuff every now and again because he's got a an, um, he's got a car which is uh, uh, you know lo looks like Knight Rider, so he's converted his Tesla into Knight Rider. Um, you know all sorts of stuff right away through from arcade games to um, machine repairs and all sorts of stuff. Um, uh, Commodore Brixty 4, I think, was one of the earlier machines he he made, um, which was basically taking a Commodore 64 and then building a case out and a keyboard out of a Lego box. So, yeah, why not? Uh, the 8-Bit Guy, um, I he's a very, very popular channel. He's been around for a long, long time as well. Um, very knowledgeable, good at repairs most of the time don't necessarily know that I agree with all of his stuff um, but in, for the most case uh, his, uh, his videos are really good and if you're not a subscriber then absolutely subscribe to his channel. The Retro Man Cave this channel started off with but now in uh, all things inclusive of course we call it RMC. Uh, Neil is in 
think the south southern part of England and um, has been doing this channel for a good long while as well and it really shows um, also Neil uh, RMC has also had a history in broadcasting I think it was maybe radio maybe TV I'm not not 100% sure but that shows because his uh, the quality of the video stuff that comes through is just really really high quality not just in the production but also in the way his personality comes across uh, what I would say is that he's gone full tilt as well he started off it was just literally his basement in his house now he's invested in a, in a warehouse it's a converted mill house um, and has really really put his heart and soul into this and then it really shows um, so yeah I mean I, I think it's very very difficult to to, to, to talk about anything bad about this channel there's just loads of really really good content um, from from all sorts of walks of life Lots of Amiga stuff, lots of Commodore stuff, um, some PC stuff in there as well. Repairs, reboots. Uh, you've got Hoffman Amiga 600 DJ set, so it does some DJing every now and again as well. That wasn't him; that was somebody else. But you know, just yeah, just all sorts of things retro. Really good channel. Action retro. I think I, I think I had this in the other bunch there, so I maybe skipped that out and put this in here by accident. But yeah. Ret Action Retro, really good channel. Uh, a lot of it Macintosh stuff. Uh, this does not compute. Um, again, really, really high production quality. This channel is, uh, it's got all sorts of things um, in terms of it has reviews. A lot of it is reviews of old equipment. Um, so like the LT1, this is a format of floppy disk, which ultimately failed. And he talks a bit about you know, the format itself, the hardware, and then he'll go into why the platform failed. And he does that for a lot of things like, you know, video CDs and you know, all that sort of stuff, the, the multimedia accessories, there was a digital camera he had with floppy disks on recently. A lot of this sort of stuff, he'll go into the detail about how it began, what area in the market it was trying to you know, fill, and then the review itself, and then why the equipment failed or went out of the market in the end. So, uh, you know, like this one here, a great, great review of the Macintosh Portable, the Mac, the mobile Mac that nobody wanted. So it talks really well about these, obviously spends an awful long time on scripts, um, unlike this video, which you can tell I'm just riffing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, really worth your, your subscribe as well. Control Alt Race, um, a, a, a Welshman who is, um, who's, I think he started around about the same time as Al's Geek Lab, but for some reason, not that I'm jealous, uh, he's got 20,000 subscribers. Um, I think he had one huge big video that really took off the channel and really aced it, and now he's just been going strength to strength ever since then. Just a really, really good channel. All sorts of things. Um, uh, you know, Atari, Atari I think, I think is, was his big first love, and so there's quite a lot of videos on Atari. But there is as much other stuff as well. Sinclair, uh, BBC, IBM. Uh, there's some game reviews. There's some um, teardowns. But there's also uh, a lot of stuff where he repairs stuff. And he's much more capable with a soldering arm than I am. So great, great stuff um, that channel as well. And I think this is the very last one. Dan Wood. Now, I don't think that Dan puts out a lot of videos. But again, he puts out videos with quality when uh, when it deserves to be released so that's I really like that what uh, quality not quantity sort of stuff um, a lot a lot of Amiga stuff he really likes Amiga I think um, so there's this video here about turning an old Mac into a high-end Amiga um, the Amiga 500 mini review uh, there's also some which is totally left field like uh, how a five uh, a Bank of England five pound note can play vinyl records so yeah um but but different but also a you know a really really nice alternative channel so and i think he does a podcast as well so it's got one of those voices really nice and easy to listen to so definitely subscribe to dan's channel now that is it so uh hopefully you've you've come across some channels there that you're not aware of and would like to subscribe to i hope that you do 
Um, and if you've got any feedback for this guy, for this channel, uh, I know that this lo this video was real long, but um, I just thought, well, I, I don't want to leave many people out. I've left some out, but most of the channels that I'm subscribed to that are worthy of a mention that are in the retro computing area, but I'll put them in. So anyway, um, hope that this has been useful for you. Um, these are really good people, really do uh, back them, and uh, we're all part of this sort of small but growing community of retro uh, enthusiasts. Um, and I thought, well, I'll help them out. Um, I'm sure that they would do the same for me. So um, so yeah, that's, um, that's the video. Um, let me know what you think uh, of any of these channels, or if you've got any other channels that you would like to have seen in this list, please add them in the comments below. Until next time, thanks very much for watching. I'll be back sometime real soon here on Owl's Geek Lab. Bye for now.